Let's go to Parliament now. Majority and minority MPs are divided over whether today's recall of Parliament is necessary. Speaker Michael Quay issued a notice asking MPs to return today. Two working days after he suspended sitting indefinitely for MPs to go on a break, Finance Minister Kendall Freyata is expected in the House to seek approval for COVID-19 related expenditures. MP for Bulsa North, James Ogaga, says government should have planned and dealt with these issues when the House was sitting last week. The decision to recall is unfortunate. You recall that on the day we rose, the minority leader made it very clear that it was wrong for the Speaker to suspend the House. He should have adjourned proceedings sine day so that in accordance with the standing orders, if we have to be recalled, we're given two weeks notice to prepare. Remember that our constituencies are very remote from the capital, Accra. And so if you have to travel all the way to your constituency only to be recalled within the matter of two days, I mean, it is most unfortunate and regrettable. You don't do that. Because by recalling within two days, you disorganize the member of parliament. Remember that part of our responsibilities and duties is owed to our constituents, which is why parliament's calendar allows us to go on recess, so that you can interact and interface with your constituents. Return to the house armed with what is happening in your constituency. You are able to contribute more effectively to the debate in the house. So if you have to be recalled within the matter of two days, what is the urgent nature of business? I am sure it all has to do with the stabilization fund. If that is true, the question to ask is, why did the finance minister not bring up the necessary amendments for us to effect before we rose? What held him back? That is, we have already been sacrificing. Remember, we sat on Saturday. Ordinarily, we don't sit on uh, Saturdays and uh, Mondays. So we've already made a lot of sacrifices, but part of the sacrifice also uh, uh, includes us going to our various constituencies to help in the sensitization of our constituents about the, the, how to contain the, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, in prior to MP, Seth Echampo insists recalling the House is in the national interest recall is in order. We are not in normal times. Um, ideally, when we were rising, in fact, we could not write Sinidai. We couldn't adjourn Sinidai because we are not in normal times. So his, the right honorable speaker suspended the house Sinidai indefinitely. And before we rose, we approved of the capping on the stabilization and heritage funds. And I should have been going to my constituency by now. But because we are not in normal times, I'm here in Kumasi, you know, observing how the deployment on the imposition of restrictions is happening. And so when I heard the news that the speaker has recalled us, he, call, he called us and he made that call to us in Accra before we rose on Saturday evening. And we need to allow the finance committee, this is, an, this is a constitutional requirement, to authorize the usage of the redrawals of the drawdown from the Stabilization and Heritage Fund, which has been duly, for my information, been affected by the finance minister into the contingency fund. And by the constitution article, the sole body that can authorize the usage of the fund is the finance committee of the Republic of Ghana's legislature. Hence, it is in order. We have to go and support the times we are in. It's not normal times for us. Let's go live to Parliament now for an update uh, on the floor, what is happening in the House. Uh, my colleague, parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opokugato joins us. Uh, Joseph, what can you report? Hello, Joseph. If you can hear me, uh, what can you report? Has business of the house started already? Uh, business of the house has not started yet, Ernest. Um, in fact, in the chamber, I could count well less than 10 MPs um, right within the precinct at the moment. It was expected that a sitting should have begun at 10 o'clock, which was actually the time that the speaker gave, uh, but most of the time sitting never ends up starting around then. But 
Um, we are waiting for sitting to begin any moment from now. A number of things are on the agenda as we gather. Uh, first of all, we are expecting that the finance minister will be updating MPs broadly when it comes to the various measures that the uh, government is taking in order to raise resources to deal with the COVID-19 issue. And then particularly, uh, there was a development on Saturday regarding the use of oil money, specifically the stabilization fund, about $200 million of that has been moved from the stabilization fund into what is called the contingency fund. Now, when that is done, the finance minister is supposed to return to parliament with an outline on what he wants to use that oil money, which is supposed to be a reserve in order for uh, use in difficult times for the economy. So parliament would have to approve that before then the house can go ahead and spend. So we gather that is what a lot of the focus will be on today, even as the House sits. But apart from that, you're also expecting that the appointment of Dr. Koboy as Deputy Health Minister uh, will be communicated formally to Parliament today and referred to the Appointment Committee. They may well work on it. They may or may not work on it between today and tomorrow and get the necessary approval done. And also, we gather that the issue having to do with tax waivers for healthcare personnel, the uh, request for that will be brought to Parliament today by the finance minister because you know that uh, per the laws of the country apart from parliament no other institution can give tax waivers and again it's expected that today uh, latest by tomorrow the finance committee would have worked on that and brought its report for the house to give the necessary approval in order to allow for that but um, it's expected to be quite a heated conversation to a certain extent because you recall the minority is particularly unhappy about this recall and the indication they give is that uh, they think this is an effort in order to get the legislation that would allow for the uh, establishment of a voters register the legal requirement to actually mature which is why and so they've sent out a warning that any business that has nothing to do with COVID-19 that's thrown in there in the course of the conversation is something that they, the minority would work out on so we're waiting to see how things will transpire in the course of the day NS. and uh, on the issue of the stabilization fund 200 million of it which has been transferred Gato, do you have indication on what exactly government intends to use that money for? Uh, when the finance minister briefed MPs about uh, two weeks ago, uh, he indicated that this is money that's going into um, the stimulus package that government intends rolling out for business people. And, uh, you know, he put that figure at a billion Ghana cities in terms of how much is going into um, the, the set stimulus package. And $200 million translates into just a little over um, a billion cities. We gather that that is exactly what it is going into. Uh, there are a lot of questions about who will end up benefiting from this stimulus package, which hasn't been answered, what the modalities will be if someone wants to access it, whether it's going to big businesses or small businesses and how much of it is going to big businesses and how much of it is going into small businesses. Uh, those are the details that the finance minister will be laying out, even for the House to give the necessary approval for. But uh, that's what the $200 million will be used for a stimulus package to support businesses and individuals uh, who are being negatively affected by the coronavirus and the uh, lockdown uh, as has been ongoing for well over 10 days now. On the issue of the minority's concern with the relevance of today's uh, recall uh, and the suspicion around the ally for the voters register, how close are we to maturity as far as that ally is concerned? Um, this is something that it would require up to 21 sitting days as far as Parliament is concerned. Now, it was first laid about a month ago, but you know the committee that looks at it, which is the Subsidiary Legislation Committee, is actually chaired by a minority MP, and that's been the practice that there are two committees that are chaired by minority MPs, the Subsidiary Legislation Committee as well as the Public Accounts Committee. And so on two different occasions when that ally was brought to Parliament, the Dominic Ayene led committee said that there were faults with it and demanded that it be withdrawn. So it was withdrawn the first time, withdrawn the second time. And with the latest laying, um, it's only counted um, just about seven certain days since the latest laying was done. And so it has a very long way to go in terms of uh, more than 
um, 16 additional days that the house has to set in order to allow for that particular document to mature, which is what raises questions about whether um, the majority would really be able to get those days in addition. And so if two more days act on today, then it's left with, well, about 14 more days that the house needs to set in order for that particular document to mature here in Parliament. So uh, we wait to see what exactly the plan will be. Per the original plan, Parliament is supposed to return from its break sometime around the 28th of May. And with the latest development as to whether it will be pushed back or they will stick to that, we don't know. But it uh, looks like that particular document is a long way away from maturity. And without that being done, um, the Electoral Commission, per the amendments that they are seeking to the legislation that allows for the holding of elections, uh, they would want to introduce the national identification card as one of the documents that you can go ahead and register uh, for the app for the new voters register with. And the Joseph, thank you very much for the update there from Parliament. That's our parliamentary correspondent, Joseph Opoku Gato. We return to the House as and when uh, we have updates when sitting actually begins.